Israel has many friends on Capitol Hill, but very few of them are as close to the country as Elliot Engel. Congressman Engel is the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, and we are honored to have him with us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Congressman Elliot Engel. Congressman, thanks for being here with us today. We appreciate it. On Father's Day, you told me earlier that there's only one thing that will bring you out of the House, and that's the state of Israel. So we that's appreciate that. That's the truth. That. That's, that's the absolute truth. Uh, I want to, you just got back from a uh, tour a bit of the Middle East. You were in Israel, Lebanon, elsewhere. I want to start with Iran. You were opposed to the nuclear deal back in 2015. We saw that last week. The IAEA is saying that the Iranians are escalating their nuclear activity. We saw what happened in the Gulf just uh, two days ago with the bombing of those tankers. Do you think there's a chance to really bring the Iranians back to the table to make a better deal? Is that something that's possible? Look, I, I don't trust this Iranian regime as far as I can throw them. Um, it was the reason that I was really against the JCPOA, as it, as it turned out last, uh, last time. Um, I think that the uh, Iranian uh, leaders lie uh, from their teeth, and um, we have to really keep an, an eye on them because they're up to no good uh, all the time. Um, I, I didn't uh, like the JCPOA because I didn't think that it prevented or stopped Iran from having a nuclear bomb. It postponed it, which is a good thing, but it didn't stop it. I also uh, object to the fact that we all know Iran is the leading state sponsor of terrorism in the world, and I didn't want them to be awash in cash so they can, they can have more money to do their uh, hateful uh, deeds. And so I think it's very important. They are a, a threat, uh, and we have to monitor them very, very carefully. And we have to let them understand that uh, we will not just sit idly by and watch their aggression go uh, unabated. Uh, certainly Israel's not going to allow it. We have uh, uh, Syria now. Uh, Iran cannot be allowed to essentially expand itself uh, into Syria. And I think that it's very important the United States and Israel continue uh, its coordination to make sure that the Iranian uh, regime uh, is not um, doing the things that uh, we all know they're capable of doing. So I think that uh, it's very important, and uh, we're going to uh, monitor them very carefully. Obviously, uh, there are things happening now that they are, uh, they seem to be whipping things up. We'll see what happens. Uh, we, what would their interest be in fueling the flames right now, attacking those fuel tankers? What, 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 why would they want to do that? They want a war? I, I don't think that you can look at uh, anything rationally uh, when you look at that regime. And I think that it's very uh, difficult to, to figure out their motives. Uh, you would think they would not want a war because, frankly, if there was a war involving the United States, and I hope there is not, um, I don't see how they think they can get on top, but, but who knows what goes on behind the scenes there. I mean, they have been uh, anti-American, anti-Israel since their revolution in 1979. Any time that there was some kind of uh, uh, an attempt to sort of bring them back to, to talk and, and be moderate, uh, they've rejected it each time. So I think we have to monitor it very carefully. Now, I'm not advocating a war because I think that we've, we've, we went into wars in, in Iraq and other places, frankly, and we were burned. So I think we have to be very, very careful. We have to balance it. On the other hand, we cannot allow Iran to continue its malevolent activities. We cannot uh, allow Iran unabated to, uh, to do the things that they're, they're prone to do. And it's going to mean that there's going to have to be coordination between the United States uh, and our allies because we really cannot do it alone. We, we, need, we need help from our allies, and hopefully the Iranians will, will back down. But time will tell. It's impossible um, to be rational where they are concerned, because the, the positions they take really seem, seem irrational. Right. You came back from Lebanon, and you know, when Israel looks out at the region, one of the primary threats is obviously Hezbollah, which has accumulated a massive arsenal 
of missiles, long range, short range, but capable of reaching anywhere within the state of Israel. Did you stress to them and to the government there, which is somewhat ruled and run by Hezbollah, what will happen one day when there will be a war, God forbid? Well, you, yes, I did. And you know there is uh, an alliance between some of the Maronite Christians and, uh, and Hezbollah, which is, which is upsetting because I do know the, the Maronite Christians and some of them have said to me for years that they would like to see peace in the region, like to see peace with Israel. But uh, unfortunately, what you have in Lebanon, in my opinion, is you sort of have a, you know, a fifth column right in the middle of the country that you, you have Hezbollah, which in many ways is, is stronger than the Lebanese military or the Lebanese institutions. And so as a result, uh, they have to tread very carefully. Now, I uh, said that um, it's totally uh, unacceptable for Hezbollah to, uh, to be treated uh, normally if they're going to continue to espouse uh, terrorism and terrorist activities. You, you know, my argument with the European Union for many years was that you cannot split Hezbollah in the middle and say, oh, there's a good part of Hezbollah where they have schools and, and, and medicines and things like that, and then another side. If you're a terrorist organization, you're a terrorist organization, period. If you're tainted, you're tainted, period. There is no good side to Hezbollah. You saw that Germany, for example, was refusing so far to, to make that decision, right, as well as some other countries across Europe. Yeah, it's, and it's always a problem. So when, you, when you're also in Lebanon, I'm sure Syria comes up. Assad seems to have retaken control. We know that later this month in Jerusalem, there will be this tri-party meeting between the national security advisors of Israel, the United States, Bolton, as well as the Russian National Security Advisor. Can Russia be trusted? No. <laughs> I won't, don't trust Putin as far as I can throw him. Um, I don't trust him, and um, I, I think we have to be very, very, very careful. Uh, first so Israel, all, you know, Netanyahu, who you met with also, what was this, just last week or the week before, yes. you spent an hour with him. Uh, he's developed what seems a close alliance with Putin. Is, does the Russian president have Israel's interest at heart? Well, the, the uh, relationship with Putin, I mean, the, whoever is Israeli prime minister um, has to deal with Russia. Russia is a fact. Uh, it's, it's not far from the region. Uh, they control a lot of things. So I don't think any Israeli leader can turn its back on Russia. But I think that uh, the Israeli leaders, whether it's Netanyahu or anybody else, understands uh, that Putin is not there to be a nice guy. Uh, Putin has his, what he wanted, he has his base uh, in, uh, in Syria. Frankly, uh, I think that we uh, mishandled Syria to a very large degree. Uh, what, what's happened there is, it breaks my heart. You have uh, Assad being the, the butcher of uh, th thousands, hundreds of thousands of his own people. It's just absolutely disgraceful. And when we had the opportunity to really go after him, we didn't do that. You know, the Free Syria Army, many years ago, five, six, seven years ago, uh, came to us and they were winning uh, on the battlefield and they asked us for help. And myself and others tried to, to, to get that and we could never quite uh, attain it because everybody assumed, well, that Assad's gonna fall on his own. It's not going to happen, and with Russia there to back them and, and doing all kinds of things, it's really a problem. But any prime minister has to deal with Russia, not with blinders on, but has to deal with Russia as, as it is, because it's an important power in that region. But we in the United States uh, should see Putin for what he is. I don't think you can trust him. I don't think anything he says is valid. He'll, he'll you know, it's almost like... And did, did, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. And did he interfere here in the elections, and are you afraid that he'll interfere in 2020? Oh, there's no, there's no doubt that the, that the Russians interfered in our elections, and there's no doubt that they're gearing up again for 2020, as, is other, uh, as are other malevolent nations as well, China, Iran. Uh, I want them all uh, out. I don't want them involved in our elections. You know, we just had elections, as people know, and they didn't end the way that Prime Minister Netanyahu wanted them to. He wasn't able to form a coalition, so we have new elections for the first time in Israeli history on September 17th. 
Do you think, would you have a word of caution to your Israeli friends, watch out, Russia might interfere in your elections? Oh, I think they already know that. I think they, I think they know that. You know, um, we, we've been accused of a lot of things, but we've never been accused of being stupid. Um, no, I think, I think they know that, and um, they're watching for it, but, but I think it's very important that the United States send a clear message. See, for me, it doesn't matter what candidate the Russians uh, uh, help. I just don't want them helping any, any candidate. I want right. them out of the American elections. And I think we have to call it the way it is and tell Putin we're not going to stand for it. Right. So I got to ask you a bit about your party. You're a longtime member of the Democratic Party, and you really are a, an amazing friend and supporter of the state of Israel, without a question. Uh, but we see, we see today what's happening. We see what's happening throughout the party with uh, certain members, such as Ilan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and others. We saw what happened with the resolution after Congresswoman Omar's comments that were seemed anti were clearly anti-Semitic, I would say. Uh, there was an attempt to pass a resolution, and, and they couldn't just have it focused on anti-Semitism. What, what do you say to that? What's well, happening to the Democratic Party? Look, we have to make sure that there is a, a strong majority uh, to help the state of Israel. Israel is the, is the largest U.S. recipient of foreign aid. Uh, there is all kinds of things that were signed under Democratic presidents. I don't think Israel is, is helped by making it a political football. We have to try to make sure that all sides support Israel. Do we have our work cut out for us? Sure we do. But there are 33 uh, Jewish members uh, of con in Congress, and 31 of them are Democrats. So I don't think Israel is served by making it a political football. I don't care if I talk to Democrats or Republicans. My message doesn't change. The United States and Israel are strong allies. Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. I stand with Israel, and we should get people to stand with Israel. And when they're wrong, we should call them out. It doesn't matter what party they're from. Um, and I think that we, if we do that consistently, will be making the right moves in the right places. And for many years, Congressman, Israel was and received bipartisan support across the aisle, but now things seem to have changed. And I hear from members of your party that depending on who wins, if a Democratic president wins in 2020, there's a chance that the foreign military that Israel gets from the United States could be cut off. We heard one of the candidates who's running for that nomination say just that the other day. So. Do you think that Israel has maybe made a mistake here? Is there, is, is, you know, Netanyahu is oftentimes accused of warming up too closely with President Trump. Is that not in Israel's interest? What can Israel do to change the well, calculation? Well, I, I, I wouldn't tell any prime minister what to do, but I would say that I think that it's, it's better to not have Israel a political football, that we want to make sure, look, look, if Democrats do, do something that's wrong with Israel, I'll, I'll say it. I mean, when we had the thing uh, on the floor with, we had the floor uh, with, with Ilan Omar, I mean, I was as vocal as, as anybody uh, with it. So I, I just think it's important that we not play politics with Israel. I want everyone to support Israel. If there are Democrats that don't, then they have to be educated. If there are Republicans that don't, then they have to be educated. Uh, we, I want to make it so that everybody supports Israel. I want to make, make it so that the United States and Israel continue to have a strong relationship. There are, there are people in the audience who probably do, didn't like President Obama, but if you take a look at what he did in terms of signing over un, un, uh, much money uh, for, for Israel, it's unprecedented, he did that. So I think we can work with Democrats and Republicans to make sure that this U.S.-Israel alliance remains strong and, and remains bipartisan. I want to make it, you know, presidents come and presidents go. And prime ministers come and prime ministers go. Maybe not in Netanyahu's case, though, but we'll see. Which? <laughs> Say, know, he's been around a while, but you never oh. know. <laughs> All right, and even members of Congress come and go, but I don't want to go so quickly. But it's the U.S.-Israel relationship that has to be strengthened. So I don't want to play politics with Israel. I want to just do everything I possibly can to make sure that the United States and Israel are one. So no matter who's prime minister or who's president, the U.S.-Israel relationship remains strong and viable. Congressman Elliot Engel, thank you very much for being with us. Say happy Father's Day and thank you. Thanks. Happy Father's Day, everybody.